think I might have a buck spotted even. Yeah? How yeah. far is he out there? Pretty far, you know, a mile or two. He's a decent <laughs> one? <laughs> so that buck that we saw, he's on private. But the area that we're at right now is an area that we've picked specifically with this type of terrain. There's a bunch of breaks as you can tell out there and we're hoping that's gonna give us a little bit of cover. Generally speaking, this stuff's pretty open and pretty flat, but this stuff's got a bunch of breaks in it. We're gonna keep cruising around, just try to locate some more of them, try to just understand more about where pronghorn live. Hayden and Sean are doing the same thing. Hopefully they're finding some bucks as well. And what do you see pressure-wise? Uh, some people driving yeah. past, not a ton though. I actually expected to see less people. Me too, I didn't really expect to see hardly any people. But there's definitely people hunting them, resident and non-resident. Right there. Those are deer. Are they? White tail. I think what we're going for. Not on this trip. <laughs> well, we've got a buck spotted. Pretty sure that he's at least walking towards public. So we're gonna make a stalk on him. There's some does, and there's just enough of terrain, like this hill in front of us goes down, and then there's another hill, and we can cut the distance in half real fast. So we're just gonna do it. Probably camel up, and we're gonna be hunting, boy. <laughs> so we've started making a move on that bigger buck that we saw down the bottom and the buck that we've seen all the way back here that ran from private all the way to the public is now out there like, oh, a couple hundred years away. <laughs> but he's about to go over the top and that's the same ridge that those other antelope are on the backside of. So at some point we need to get up there, but I don't want to spook him and have him run right over the top. So we're just kind of being patient to see if he'll just ease over that lip and get out of sight and then we can just shoot kind of for that opposite hillside to where we can get a vantage. just watched the little buck we found him we just kept walking down this ridge and he just went over the saddle dropped down our low spot we're gonna cut across and try to cut the distance real quick messed it up. That bigger buck was in here and he was down below. A smaller buck circled around him and because we were trying to get in front of the smaller buck we gave up our wind and I think they both got us and now the bucks are running away. Dang it. Unless they start holding way up I think we're out of luck.
make a move for it. You cool for it? Yep. Alright. Flight was good. Well, we missed one in the books. <laughs> I don't think we got a good chance at him at this point, but he got to what I thought was like 55, 60. I mean, ideally, we should want it like 15 yards, you know, and I think you can do that here. I don't think you can do it up in that grass stuff. Mm -hmm. On to the next one. Yeah, on to the next one. I'm shaking, I'm shaking a little yeah. bit, dude. That was pretty sweet. Made it back to the car, rehydrated again, because we were getting to a point there where we weren't hydrated. Now, we're checking out some more stuff. That one right there, right here. See him? No, that's just a rock. Yeah, those are looking like bucks, but they're looking like they're eight or nine miles out. so sunny like that the, they just are they're glistening they're abstract at this point we have spotted and we're all the way out past that mound out there oh yeah that's getting sweet Got him. Where are they? Looks like two bucks. Straight down the ditch. And I'll tell you what. Remember how small they looked way back here at the truck, like a mile? Yeah. They look exactly the same. They're so far. <laughs> I think with that much terrain, unless they go straight away from us, you're gonna have a, at least something to work with. Aiden is up on that hill, but we dropped off. Now we're way down low. You can see there's just this little ditch and up there's where Hayden is. So we're moving down this thing, just sneaking along this creek as it winds around. 
as we get closer, we're going to drop all the way to the bottom, but we're just trying to cover ground fast because we know that those antelope are there. We're going to keep moving. Keep moving. <laughs> Sounded good, didn't it? Yeah. Maybe it isn't hit. He's not acting hit. I think I might have just nicked his nicked him. He's fine, I guess. I mean, that was a perfect stock. Yeah, the doe caught me too early and I knew, I knew what was gonna happen. two miles away it seems. I think it went like that. There's no real blood, there's not even blood on it. It's like a little bit of, a little bit of fat up here. I think it just sliced him and then it probably hit that rock. And that's why it just went skew. We're talking about this shot and in, in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have shot really. Right when I started aiming at him, I had wind and it was kind of moving that bow around and, I let, and that got in my head for a second and the wind calmed down. I got my pin settled and I shot, but as soon as that wind had me flustered, I should have just let down. You know, we're looking at the arrow here, but based off of what I saw through my binoculars, what we saw with our eyes and what the arrow is telling us is that I think it just barely nicked like the front of his brisket or something because there's just a little bit of like fatty I guess just kind of fatty residue on the arrow. There's a little, there's like one hair that's white. Uh, I could see a little bit of blood right in the front of him. Like we showed you, he was running way out there. I just think that one thing that I'm taking away from it is that if I draw back and I don't feel good about it in any situation in the future, I'm letting down and I am pretty angry at myself for not doing that, but I guess it's just a learning point. Good lord. You're not weak either, so that's like, I know that's pretty on there. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on then? Well, trying to change the tire. This is what the manual said, so we're just following yep. that. One of the many functions of a tire iron. Okay. I'm gonna make one more stock. 
We got a buck right by a fence line that's got just like a little levee between him and us, so Gucci's gonna drop us off. We're gonna jump off the road and just try to use that little bit of terrain, just crawl to it. Did you not see him? No. Not bad. This one's right on a lip and he's standing like I see him now. Yeah, now I see him plain as day. I can't believe we didn't spook him. over this berm. That berm goes all the way to where the bucks have on the ground here. He's having it off. Aiden, what do you think, buddy? Good first day. It's gonna kill him tomorrow. That's right. Somebody is. There's no missing involved, I think. No. <laughs> Nobody will miss this whole that. trip. Yeah. All right, it's the end of day one. Learned some stuff. Uh, definitely had more opportunities than we thought. There's a lot of hunters as well. I think that was a big standout thing, but we're getting opportunities. We feel like if we just keep putting our best effort forward, we're eventually gonna get some pronghorn down. We've talked to some people that are shooting them and there's still plenty of running around. Pretty much everywhere we go, we're seeing pronghorn. So having a blast, looking forward to tomorrow. Gonna hit the tents, go to sleep. Be back after them in the morning.